coming up on this episode of Common Denominator. It just looked like he didn't look at his feet for three years. Oh my God. You know, if you could just imagine wow. just how that would be going, coming into your office and when you take off the sock and shoe for the reveal, and then it's that. I mean, literally picture Guinness Book of World Records. Hi, and welcome to Common Denominator, where we focus on human connection and what brings us together. I'm Moshe Popek, and today, taking care of our feet and how foot health can shape our overall health. My guest is Dr. Brad Schaefer, a prominent foot and ankle surgeon and one of the stars of the hit TLC series, My Feet Are Killing Me. He was also recently named a finalist in Men's Health Magazine's Ultimate Guy Search. We'll talk to him about his experience on TV, why he's so passionate about physical and mental fitness. We'll even get some tips on choosing the perfect sneaker. Before that, a quick reminder that if you like the show, please subscribe and follow me on social media at M. Popak. Now, here's my conversation with Dr. Bradley Schaefer. Enjoy. Hi, Dr. Brad. What's up, man? How are you? All good. Welcome to Common Denominator. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I always, I always, first of all, I'm a big believer in people specializing in what they do and um, yourself as a foot, foot surgeon. But I always know when you do specialize in something, people always tend to like come to you. You could be at like a, you know, get together, a party and they're <laughs> coming over to you. I'm just thinking as a, as a foot doctor, like, like, what is that like? Is people always coming to you asking you advice about their feet? Is Bro, it's gnarly. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting. I mean, you could be at, yeah, whatever about a sporting event or something. You talk, we're talking restaurants, you know, yeah. bars or something like that. Um, and they come up and they just pick your brain. And at the end of the day, it's easier to just say, you know what? Let me see. Because it, it streamlines it. I can help them out very quick. And I have the time and I don't mind to do it. So uh, it's really, that's really good. Gracious of you because I'm talking to different, different people and they have like, diplomatic ways to like come into the office yeah. here's the car we could talk about it you know totally so, so that well it, although you might think that in your head I, I definitely do not communicate that verbally <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like let's let's knock this out and help you out real quick and then, then i can get on to my it's like being oh, uh brad schaefer yeah you know i did like oh so i have this big bunion <laughs> it's like yeah yeah, funny, yeah right? for sure like, uh, yeah oh it's it's they're crazy yeah. So I think I guess it's very specific because um, I think of different things when I think of when I think of feet. Uh, for you, what was it um, that got you interested in you know going through medical school and getting into foot surgery? Sure. So you know, with podiatry, uh, it's a streamlined career. Uh, you go right from college right to podiatry school. Um, it's almost like the same thing as as dentists. So you go four years undergrad, uh, four years podiatry school, and then you go into residency after that. And that's another three years. So it's a it's a very rigorous training, um, but it does streamline it. So you cut out some of the, um, you know, the decision making with medical school. You can kind of go in and you decide whether you want to be in ortho, whether you want to be in peds, you know, cardio. Um, when you go to medical school, it you're allowed that that extra time to pick. Um, podiatry is just like, you're a podiatry bus right now, buddy. So that's what podiatry school is. Um, with me, um, I grew up playing a ton of sports. Um, I absolutely was passionate about, um, well, mostly baseball. I'm, I literally have like baseball stuff all around my office. <laughs> so, um, with baseball, I had a lot of uh, foot and ankle issues. So my local podiatrist, um, he used to tape me up before different sporting events. So I used to be like, oh, it's a pretty cool career. Um, not really taking any mind or paying any attention to doing something like that um, for a variety of different reasons, mostly because I wanted to be a professional baseball player. And that's the only thing I could think about. Um so I actually played near you. Um, I know you're in Miami right yeah. now. I played at Palm Beach Atlantic University wow, sure. um, in West Palm. Yeah, so I was down there for for a time, and I was a center fielder on that team. I didn't I didn't have too much uh, too much playing time, so I had to pivot real quick to medicine. Um, but it was the best decision of my life. Yeah. Um, so yeah, locally growing up playing sports, getting taped up before games, and um, I knew about it. I loved the streamlined version of medicine. Um, how you didn't have to take more years away from your, um, you know, your life to become what you always wanted to be. And to me, it was foot foot specialist, 
extraordinaire. Yes. I, I, it's right I, up my alley. You know, I always think about it. Um, you know, people don't realize the same thing when it comes to like dental health, how it actually o- affects your overall health. Tell us a little bit about um, like, like why, like why feet uh, is so important at, to your overall health. Sure. Well, I always say it like this, uh, feet are our body's natural shock absorbers and they're, they're our stabilizing factor every step that we take. So whether you're working out, your feet hurt, start barking at you, you're not going to be able to work out. You're not going to be able to get fit and live the quality of life that you want. And you're going to start gaining weight and stuff and have arthritis and different pains elsewhere. Um, you know, as far as, you know, just supporting our feet, you know, it, it just starts as easy as our shoes or the insoles that we wear. And that can just get us out to walking around the block, getting our steps in with our, you know, our partners or our friends. And, you know, that can jump start a healthy, active lifestyle. Um, so honestly, I feel like everything starts with your feet. And once you start there, you can really build up and, you know, focus on the rest. But it really can give you that good um, jump start into your day. And then I know that kind and of activity. I was just thinking, well, I know also that kind of in Chinese medicine, it's kind of like the, uh, it's amazing to see like the acupuncture points. It seems like in the, on the meridians, it actually affects, you know, I don't even re- really know how that works, but it kind of affects the entire body. Like your shoulder could be hurting and then you, you put some needles on the feet and really, mm-hmm. really, really. Change. So I'm interested in that too. I think it's awesome. Uh, I can't say that I've actually gone, um, but I, I do know people that, that have and swear by it. It's not necessarily like the way we, we've been trained. Mm. Um, so I haven't invested a ton of time into that, but, um, yeah, it's, it's wild. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to knock it. I I'm sure it works, you know, definitely a huge group of people out there that love that. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm always doing research on, on both words, worlds, Eastern and Western medicine, and I think that there's just kind of some, you know, I always think about results, the sign kind of like happy medium. What would you say is the um, kind of m- most complicated case that you've had? Uh, in, <laughs> my, in my practice and surgically? Sure. Um, so there's two, there's two like levels of my life. Um, one is... Uh, there's a show on TLC. It's called my feet are killing me. Uh, and I start on that for four and a half seasons. We really show extreme versions of, um, foot and ankle deformities. So on there, uh, and that's not things that I see every day that walk through my office. Right. Um, I'd probably say that I saw like Guinness book of world record style, just nails at one time. And that wasn't complicated. It was easily taken care of, but it was super shocking. Um, it, it just looked like he didn't look at his feet for three years. Oh my! God. You know, if you could just imagine wow. just how that would be going, coming into your office. And when you take off the sock and shoe for the reveal, and then it's that, I mean, literally picture Guinness book of world records. So that was one of my craziest. Also on the show, there was this guy that had just like these growths on the bottom of his feet. And since you're in Florida right now, it looked like barnacles on the bottom of a mm. boat. So think about that, right? So I had to shave all of those off. But yeah, these aren't things that I see every single day. Um, one of the most extreme things that I've treated um, in my office um, in Central Park Seoul, it's something that I do a lot of there. I do a lot of botched surgery. So I do a lot of recons that people come in with failures, um, that they're just not happy with the results. So I dedicate a lot of time to putting the pieces back together. And also because of the show, they see me fix other people's mistakes. And so sometimes mistakes happen. I'm not there to dog a doctor or you know get down on anything because mistakes do happen. But I'm passionate about fixing it. Some doctors won't even touch it. Uh, I'm, I'm not like that. I, I find it challenging, exciting. Um, yeah, and I like to do it. <laughs> I'll tell you something. You know, I think about, wow, well, it's actually a show. You know, it's a hit show, you know, about, about feet, right? And, yeah. And I'm thinking I, one of my kids actually downloaded um, a, an app. It's called Foot Clinic. And they're sitting there working, oh. on, working on feet. It's a game. And I'm like, and my son's like, it's super popular. And uh, actually, right, because everybody has feet. And everybody's dealing with it. 
Um, so definitely, huh. I could definitely see. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting. You just go on the app store. It's called Foot Clinic. Sure. Yeah, it's a, I will be downloading that uh, right after. See, <laughs> it's like it's like a thing you give to all sure. your clients, right? So, yeah. I, I mean, oh, I, that's I, awesome. Yeah, it's Foot a, Clinic. It, yeah, they're actually working. It's a podiatrist that actually works on works on works on people's feet. Uh, amazing. And then how um, how was that experience? Like, did it, you know, so you're on this hit show. Like, take us behind the scenes. How is um, like how they approach you, and you know, yep. your four and a half years. What what's that experience like? Um, just super humbling. Um, honestly, it's it's been a wild ride. So my whole thing was like when I got out of residency, um, I was just super honest and transparent about like how hard things are, how hard it is being a resident, uh, kind of like in a hospital setting, how divided certain things are like from the doctors to the nurses to the residents like everyone just kind of dogs each other sometimes it's like you know we're all a team trying to achieve you know the you know the the patient's goal and that's to be healthy um so you know when i was putting all that out there i was also doing a lot with fitness um showing workouts and you know different health and wellness stuff within myself so kind of like practicing what i preached and i think just like my honesty and you know just how i was living my life and wasn't just like that cookie cutter doctor. Um, so that you can have like a lifestyle fun, um, different aspects of that. I think it really resonated. And with that, um, you know, social media started to gain traction and then I got a lot of followers and with a lot of followers, got a little notoriety and then a production company, um, reached out and said, Hey, would you have any interest in filming a pilot? for this new show that we're trying to film. And I was like, man, no one's going to watch that. This is, this is, this is crazy. Who wants to look at feet? But what I've found is, you know, to a lot of people, feet are gross to a lot of people, feet are sexy Um, to a lot of people, feet are just like non nonstop. They can't watch it, you know, or they can't put the, you know, remote down. They have to keep watching it. So there's a lot of different spectrums of what people dig with feet. Um, a lot of people dig that same thing with pimples, you know, like once you yeah. start watching pimples being popped, it's hard to, it's hard to stop watching. I, I don't feel that way. Right. I mean, that's I can the, definitely not watch that. Right. That Dr. Pimple Popper is the other one. Right. I was like, yeah, and it's a thing. So it's, she blew up, she yeah. blew up and she's super talented, Sandra Lee, yeah. um, and super sweet and humble and just so talented. So with what she was doing, I think TLC and other production company out there they were like what's next so with me and doing all the work that i was doing i think that we were a perfect fit for what would be next and that that's my feet are killing me on tlc if you're just joining us you're listening to the common denominator podcast my guest is prominent foot and ankle surgeon dr brad schaefer who's one of the stars of the hit tlc series my feet are killing me next week i'll chat with alicia covey the co-founder of an eight-figure business portfolio including a company she scaled 4,000% in less than five years. She has expert strategies to help you flourish as an entrepreneur while living a healthy, positive, and grateful life. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Now, back to the show. Yeah, and I know, um, you know, I, uh, physical fitness is super, super important, and it comes into to your lifestyle. And I like, even after you start, stop playing baseball, um, you know, you, you, uh, you made that as a super important thing. What is yep. your, and I always think about this, you know, I have one son who's hitting the gym a couple hours a day and then another one's kind of, um, uh, on a, like a tonal, um, more, more lean. What would you, you know, in your, in your physical fitness journey, what would you recommend, um, as the best um, sustainable? That's a good, that's a good question. I would say when I was playing ball, I was all about bulk and just mm-hmm. trying to bulk up so I could hit the ball harder, you know, faster, whatever. Um, nowadays I'm more about, you know, lean, uh, more reps, um, just constant high intensity interval training. I just think it's, it's healthier. Um, it's less pressure on your joints. Um, and, but listen, if, if you, if you dig that look and you want to be bigger, it's not like, it's not like it's a negative. Um, it's a different stress and strain on your, on your body, you know, biomechanically, but yeah, I'm all, I'm all for both just everything in moderation, like even high intensity interval training, you don't want to go out there and strain something. So, 
you know, you can't continue to work out at that pace because it's a crazy pace. I mean, my, my workouts are quick. Um, and the pace is strong, but when I used to bulk up, it used to be slow, you know, heavy weight, um, mental, mentally in, involved in that. It was like, like another sport. Um, it's right. not for me anymore, but I know I have a lot of friends that still dig it. Yeah. I, um, you know, me, me too. I'm, you know, high intensity is the same, you know, yeah. we have a certain amount of time in the day and, and what is, um, like food intake? What is that? How does that play in? You know, you want to be physically fit. How does that, uh, play in? Um, sure. So I don't know if it's gotten some cr uh, criticism, but I'm big into waking up and fasting, you know, through certain periods of the day. So I don't really eat until like one o'clock. Um, now I'll have coffee. Um, you know, I don't see anything wrong with that, but yeah, I'll, I'll allow my body to process and try to burn, you know, fat and different things. And then I'll eat, um, a moderate lunch, you know, just, I'd say, just say like tuna fish, but on one piece of bread, um, and then nuts instead of chips, you know, things like that, like good, good fats type deal. Um, good carbs. And then at dinner, I'll, I'll, I'll eat a, a healthy meal, but I don't, I don't like stick to just salmon or rice or just chicken and rice. Like I'll, I'll eat properly like a normal person. Um, but it really helps with your LBs. And, um, I think it just really helps with your overall mindset too, because it's controllable. Yeah. Um, I don't think you need to wake up and just eat a huge breakfast then you know, crush a huge sandwich for lunch. I mean, it's, it's hard to maintain a, a good build with that diet in my opinion. And I want to give you congratulations on the, uh, on the spread in the men's health magazine, right? Oh, thanks dude. Ultimate, ultimate guy search. So, yeah. so we're speaking, we're speaking to a fellow who, uh, who knows what he's talking about. So I definitely appreciate sure. that, you know? And, oh man, I appreciate you shouting that out. Thank you. And yeah, that was crazy. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, that's, that's probably right. All the social media, all the awareness. And then how, what is it? I guess men's health came and approached you or you had to apply <laughs> or. Right. So, uh, Every year, and I've been a fan of men's health for years, um, you know, growing up playing ball. That's what I, you know, read to just try to get my fitness routines and different, you know, tricks and stuff. So, yeah, fan of them for years. Uh, and then I knew each year they were doing this th that search. Um, so I never thought I'd be asked or I I'd even kind of get to a level to where they would consider me. Um, but you know, I think with all the positivity and stuff that I was putting out on Instagram uh, last year, I actually uh, publicly came out. So it was a perfect um, forum uh, to just kind of spread love in, in a different way. Um, and what I was telling my friend the other day was like um, the, the version of a male, I would say when I was reading it when I was younger and playing ball and stuff, you know, a little different. It was more of that meathead mentality. And I think men's health is really trying to, you know, script a, a different version of what men can be. And it doesn't always need to be just, you know, hyper-focused and um, internalize all your pain, um, you know, in dif different ways to get out there. Like mental health, um, like the guy that won, um, he's absolutely incredible. And he was um, army vet, um, had an um, explosion, uh, lost, you know, a limb. Uh, part of his hand actually and uh he went into a depression dark dark side of his life but he decided to help that with therapy and you know a lot of people had a, a very hard stance on what therapy was that was like a cop out you're a little bit of a um you know b-i-t-c-h if you went to therapy and can't deal with it on your own well that's crap you know like people need to talk and depending on who you are what kind of family structure you have you need to get that stuff out. So he's a big advocate for therapy, um, especially in the black community too. Um, they have a stigma about that. So he's really trying to break down stereotypes. So he absolutely crushed it. And oh my gosh, I'm so glad he won. Um, he's super inspiring. And I, I tell you, you keep bringing back to about humility and positivity. I'm a huge fan of that. You have to walk that walk every day. And, Absolutely. Uh, and, and and live in gratitude and just keep putting that out there, even though, like you said, you know, I'm putting out this stuff. Nobody hears what I'm saying or but if you're coming with the correct and right intention, uh, I really appreciate that. And I know you come from a Christian background and probably that yep. like that journey um, of coming out that probably 
uh, you know, that probably was a little bit, a little bit of a journey, a little bit of a challenge. I know you came out first. Oh yeah, to, absolutely. To dad, right to your dad. That was then, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, growing up Christian, whatever religion you are, yeah. um, you know, people have different stances on, you know, a variety of different things. Um, you know, being gay or you know, bisexual, uh, anyone in the, in the community, you know, it's, uh, and they can say whatever they want, but it's, it's super frowned upon, right. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's not necessarily like, Oh yeah, for sure. You know, that's easy. You know, no, it's, it's not like that. And, um, especially the way I grew up and I grew up fantastic, but it was something that you were taught, um, at least that you could fight. And, you know, if you fought it and pray, like that's something that, you know, eventually you could beat. So being an athlete and stuff, I was like, all right, I'll beat this. No problem. Like other people are probably dealing with worse stuff, right. you know? So I was like, I can definitely tackle this one. So it's focused on, you know, myself, staying healthy, focused on my family, got married, um, thought that would be the next step. But you just bring, you bring people into your rabbit hole that they don't belong in, you know, and it's, it's your journey. And it's unfortunate that we get told that that needs to be our journey. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely out there right now. I've, I've been, I've been out and comfortable for 10 plus years. Um, but you know, with the show and stuff, the narrative kind of started getting switched up a little bit where I was back into that straight role, you know, and that's fine by me. I don't care. This is just the way I act. So if you want to think that I'm, you know, one thing versus another, I, I really don't care. That's just your perception of me but i wanted to set the narrative i want to set the record straight and like i i am super comfortable happy healthy um internally and out with um with who i am as a person and i hope no one has to deal with that crap ed- anymore yeah no there's who knows everybody everybody i speak to that goes through that journey um there's just a, just the journey it's a personal journey and there's a lot of unfortunately a lot of pain um and uh you know so i'm i'm only wish you, you know, the best on your on your journey and 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 the show. But I want to ask you this. Thank you. Um, you know, what is and you know, just be going going back to like the feet. What is how does someone choose like the perfect uh, pair of shoes? I was like thinking about that because I've been I've been going through so yeah. many rounds of shoes. It was like, sure. What are you What are you looking to do? Like more of a sports shoe? Well, I would say more. I would say more. Um, just you're on your feet all day walking around. What would you say? Yeah, so I, I always I always say this. It's not necessarily the shoe. It's it's honestly not. Um, make sure the shoe has a wide toe box. You know, has good tread and stuff and and support. But if you get if you get a good insert insole orthotic, anything in that shoe to support your feet properly. You know, cupping your heel, supporting your arch. I mean, it's really going to offload and support your feet every step that you take. Um, I do a lot of work with Dr. Scholes. I think they're a huge game changer. Um, and they've been, they've been in the business for a very long time. If you have other issues like, you know, bunions or neuromas or different type of foot ailments that need a custom orthotic, we do that as podiatrists. So we'll take a 3d scan of your feet and then, yeah, you can slide those in all of your shoes, um, and make a Brooks or an Asics or a Nike shoe, just like, the best for you um directly and that's what i'm wearing right now i'm like you know, orthotics and um you know dr shoals inserts and working out with uh well i got brooks on right now so sure no I, it's funny because you know you always think like like nike or reebok or something or adidas and my son came home the other day and he had a sneaker from switzerland apparently endorsed by roger federer or he owns some of it and it's called on cloud an amazing, amazing sneaker, like materially better. So no laces, but it still feels snug. And then just a really soft cushion on the sneaker. Uh, it's just been amazing. The only thing I have to say yeah. to shoes like that is like, if, if there's not a proper lace, you know, it, it it's, mm. it's still like a water shoe. Mm. You know, you, you kind of got to have a tongue that, yeah. that allows things to fit in. So you can kind of customize it a little better. But listen, I have shoes like that too. Yeah. You know, just don't sure. make it your everyday shit. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. So, what? So, what's next for you personally, professionally? Um, where do you go from here? Sure. So, I mean, right now, uh, Central Park Soul, which is my practice, that's my baby. Uh, I opened that a little over a year ago. It's um, 
it's my own practice in New York City. So, I mean, if you don't make it there, you don't make it anywhere type deal. Like it's a, it's a huge passion. I'm dedicating a lot of time to it, but yeah, just continuing my outreach, um, you know, different communities. Um, I just did a, a walk for uh, prostate cancer on Wednesday night with the blue jacket, uh, fashion show, which was awesome. Um, so I'm really trying to get myself out there and, fitness, um, get myself out there in the medical community and spread the word about how amazing podiatry is. Um, and yeah, just, just continue to live every day. Um, no bullshit, just live every day and be happy. Um, I, I honestly think that's the mindset that everyone should be in. Not a lot of people have it, but like someone asked me a question the other day, it's like, well, how do you, how do you live your life? It's like, I want to crush every moment. So like this interview, like whether I had a tire, I was tired this morning or whatnot, I want to crush this interview, you know, for you, for myself, for anyone that's watching after I close the computer, I want to go and crush my afternoon session at work, you know? So I really just want to focus on the patient visit, the afternoon, my ride home of zone out, listen to music, like just crush it, you know? And if you do that, um, you'll succeed. Really? Just don't get too ahead of yourself and just make this right here the best it can be. Yeah. So, I, and then on that note, I will ask all the guests, what would you say top of mind, something that you're deeply grateful for? Um, health. Mm. Yeah. But right now it's my health for sure. I've, I've had different people that I've had health issues, you know, throughout the last like three years, super close to me. And thankfully like they're, they're okay. But yeah, just going through all that, it was, it was wild. So yeah, just health for myself and my family. Yeah, I would agree with that for sure. And what's something that people don't know about you? Shit, yeah, people probably know everything now. <laughs> I really, <laughs> I really opened up it a lot over these last three than, yeah, years, which is good. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it's it's like the the main way to be. Uh, yeah, I said this. I like uh, I like Tostitos. Uh, chips and i i probably eat tostitos chips with every meal so as healthy as i sound and say i live that but i will have like tostitos chips on the side and i will i will have that little crunch with me like even if i'm eating salmon one night i'll be having some tostitos you know scoops you know, i'm not dipping it in anything but I, I freaking love those scoops yeah, lo oh. I love the I love when they created that. That was great, right? Yeah, it was, it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So shout out to Tostitos. And I want to just tell you something about about happiness because this just rang in my head. Uh, Gary V said um, I was listening the other day, and he said actually you got to fight for your happiness every day. That's actually the work. So oh, I'm feeling crappy. So what am I gonna do? That's the whole work. Yeah, really, right? It doesn't come just because you snap your fingers. What am I gonna? Couldn't do? agree more. Right. What am I going to do to fight for my happiness? So yeah. I know I know you're on that journey and every single day. That's right. That's the best we can do. We got to crush everything um, yes. that we do and be Absolutely. present as much as we can. How can yep. um, I want to thank you so much, Dr. Brad. And how can uh, if people want to follow you on social um, and be in touch? How can they? Sure. Do so uh, a lot of the things I do, it's uh, doctor spelled out dot Bradley. Uh, that's on Instagram. Um, my website is www.centralparksoul.com. That's where you can find me for any type of consults. I'm on 85th and Central Park West in New York City. Um, and those are the main outreaches that I do. I also have Twitter and stuff, but hit me up on Instagram or at my website and we can get in contact for sure. Well, thank you so much, Doctor. Hope you enjoyed my conversation with Dr. Brad Schaefer. Next week, my guest will be Alicia Covey. She's the co-founder of an eight-figure business portfolio, including a company she scaled 4,000% in less than five years. She's also a trusted mentor, coach, podcast host, and a really funny person. Be prepared to be inspired and entertained. Please subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode and follow me on social media at mpopak. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you again soon.